I gave the burnt sienna layer time to dry. And so now we can start painting on top of it again with another layer of glaze. And the way hair goes, it's almost like doing the layers of the face. Everything I do is done in those types of layers. You do a burnt sienna underpainting, the first layer. And then we're going to define some of the hair, well, where I want some of the hair to be anyway, with some burnt umber. And you can open it up off camera. And this is going to be a really quick layer. I'm just going to mix it up and brush it on. I drew all the lines that I wanted where I wanted my stuff to go so now I'm going to just brush them in very loosely with this burnt umber. There's going to be a shadow here by her neck. The hair that falls in front of the neck is there so we're going to paint in the shadow. And then I just start painting in all the curves. I try to keep the lines long and smooth, like I was saying. Just so make sure I don't have any choppy short lines unless I'm painting choppy short here. And this is um, a rather dry mix. There is a ton of back and forth in the hair. And you just go back and forth with your um, shadow, you go back and forth with your highlight, and you just go until you like it. There is a fly in here. I'm just putting all the brown layers in. And I go all the way down the hair, just suggesting the same areas that I drew in my pencil. And I'm holding the camera, sorry for the shakiness, just so you guys can see. I watered it down some just to get down here really fast. Alrighty. Well, from here you can go darker or lighter with your hair, but you really need to decide, you know, what color you're going to do before you go any further. And I assume right, you probably already have, right? You probably already have a really good idea of what hair color you would like. Just let your burnt umber dry and we'll start. I like to draw really long wavy hair and I like to paint kind of like a mermaid white blonde hair. I think I'm going to do that here too. I'm going to start with blonde and I'm going to see how I like it. I have my yellow ochre. You're going to have to use whatever color you'd like for your hair. This might be whatever color you have too. I'm not sure. I'm mixing my yellow with my extender right now off camera so that it'll smooth on very easily. You want this to be a pretty thin layer and if you decide after you put on like a yellow or a blonde color that you'd like to go darker you can keep building up and going darker but if you start off with black you're gonna have a hard time going to a lighter color unless you gesso over your hair. So I'm just going to start. I'm going to paint over everything I did. Just like in the face because we were just establishing value and shadow and form. We weren't trying to render out the hair just yet. This is almost a pure yellow ochre too so it's going to be very bright yellow. Just a little extender in there. Now if I don't like how it's laying on, I'm going to water it down some. But it looks like it's good right now. 
you see it just everywhere. Just brush, brush, brush. And this is like a fill layer. You're just filling in the entire area, but you still have to brush along the way that you want your hair to lie. You don't just brush all crazy. You need to always follow the forms of the hair or whatever you previously put on there. And part of the reason we do the underpainting is because it does a lot of the shading for us. We're still going to go back in and shade, but it, it just establishes that shade base for us. I'm not sure if you can see it that well on camera. I'll pick up the camera too. And watch me work. Follow along. We'll take notes or whatever we need to do, and then I'll pick it up and I'll show you. Right now she's got like a strawberry blonde thing going on that's pretty cool too. Pulling more color through the top. And this isn't where you're going to have trouble either. Filling in the hair, not where you're going to have any problems. You are going to have questions when it comes to highlighting, making your hair look more natural, how to shade, where to place it. So we're going to cover that too. But I got to get all this base color in there. And if you follow it like that, you'll have the brush strokes that like painting like this will give you. You're going to see horizontal brush strokes. You don't want to see that in your hair. It's not going to make your hair look any more realistic. And even though this is a whimsical hair, you want it to look like it's all a part of the girl, not all a part of the painting of the girl, if that makes any sense at all. lightly brush into the shadow. I'm not going to fill in the shadow with a whole bunch of paint. And I'm trying to get an even layer on this yellow glaze. I'm not trying to have it too thin in places or too thick in other places. Except for that shadow where it was thinner. And I'm going to come down here and do the bottom curl. Let me show you. You're still getting a line If you can see that of brown showing through because this is a glaze, it's transparent. And then I decide how light I want it to be or how dark I want it to be and where I would like my highlights and where I would like my deepest shadow. The highlights are going to be in the roundest part of the face or part of the hair, pardon me, where the light is hitting it. And I'm just going to block those in. I'm not going to draw or paint really long lines. I'm just mixing my paint color. I'm going to do it with a little bit of Titan Buff or your porcelain and the yellow to make a tint of it. I'm not going to use bright white just yet. So for me, the roundest part of the hair is where the bumps are up here. I'm going to paint on exactly how the hair lies. I'm going to go crazy with this. You could give her a million highlights of where the light hits. But hair really isn't that shiny. You know, it's not made out of plastic, so you don't need to give too much. And I'm going to show you this too, but. I brushed them on and then I'm blending them out just a little bit so they look like they're sitting on hair, not just sitting on the painting. And this is one of the only times that brush strokes are going to be something you want to kind of show because it helps the highlight for you. And down at the bottom, I'm not going to do too much in the way I highlight. I'm just going to do it at the the bumps. You can see that just in the bumps. I'm going to pick it up and show it to you now. You can see all those highlights that I just did. I'm going to let these dry 
through just a little bit so that when I put the next layer of glaze on, I'm not moving these around. I like exactly where these are. I don't need them to blend into anything. So I'll see you in like 10 minutes.